what's up youtube back at you with another video uh we're here with the benavidez versus andrade press conference now um this has been an interesting year for boxing um what could have easily been the best year actually turned out to be a very mid-year um some of the biggest fights seriously underperform and i'm talking about Sprence crawford I'm talking about charla versus canelo uh and some more shit, but those are the two fights that like really disappointed the shit out of me. Oh yeah, and Shakur Stevenson versus that guy, the shit was trash. So anyway, hopefully this fight picks up the slack because Showtime is leaving boxing. So the fact that this is one of the last big fights of the year, hopefully 2023 can end on a decent note. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, and also, uh, Jose Benavidez and Jamal Charlo are also on the undercard of this fight. And I know that's going to be very interesting because Jamal is coming off of a two and a half year layoff. And Jose Benavidez has a big ass chip on his shoulder based on the virtual press conference that they had with Brian Custer like last week. Um, yeah, so this is actually a pretty good card, you know, relative to a lot of the other shit that's been going on this year. So anyway, let's go pay-per-view presented by premier boxing champions promoted by tgb promotions and samson boxing oh my goodness what a dynamic card we have from top to bottom on stage we have our co-main event and our main event but before we get to those fighters i want to let you know about what we have in store this upcoming saturday from michelob ultra arena at mandalay and it's crazy because Jamal used to freaking hate Demetrius Andre's guts. So it's it's crazy that like after all this time you see the two of them sit next to each other. To me, this is kind of crazy. But anyway, let's continue. Bay in Las Vegas. We will begin the night. IBF 140 pound world champion Subriel Matias, who is a heavy hitter. He will defend his world championship against unbeaten top rated challenger Shojahan Ergashev. Also, WBA Super Featherweight right, World right, Champion. Right, right. How's it going, everybody? First off, uh, I want to thank God. I want to thank BBC, Al Heyman, TGB for giving me an opportunity f to be a part of this great event, you know? And it's crazy because this shit is like the same storyline or a similar storyline as to his character in fucking Creed because it took me a while to realize that this is the same dude. And I honestly feel like he's going to get knocked out by Jamal, just like how he got knocked out by Jonathan Majors in the movie. So that will be really funny to see, like, the correlation and parallel between these two guys. Oh, this big fight. And I want to thank my team. You know, my team's been with me, you know, since day one. My brother's been there training me since we were little kids. My dad, you know, without them, you know, this wouldn't be possible. And my wife, you know, has been there supporting me. Just everyone in general, Team Benavides, you know, my kids. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm, I just, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where... I'm ready to take on anybody, anywhere, any place. I don't really have much to say. You know, we said what we had to say in press yeah, conference. You're a journeyman. So the first one, so I um, mean. You're a journeyman. Make the best man win. Thank you, guys. Hey, yeah, journeyman. Jose Benavidez Jr. Welcome back to competition. Here is Jamal Charlo. Are you? Here's one serious? thing you need to Yo, do before YouTube buying is anything so online. Don't spend bro. another dime on Amazon until you watch this first. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks for um, waiting on me. Uh, I appreciate everyone who uh, had you know deep concerns about me, and um, I'm better now. Um, I'm ready to step in the ring with a uh, tough Jose, um, and you know um, his energy is a lot different now than it was uh, in the first press conference. So. Obviously, you know, I, I uh, adapt to it. But um, I can't wait to get in there um, November 25th and show the world that I'm back. And, um, yeah, let's get it. We're um, back at 168 uh, real soon. Um, good luck to you. And uh, good luck to you, David. Um, y'all do what y'all got to do. Um, I'm here, baby. I'm back. <laughs> Yes, Jamal Charlo is back. It is great to see him back here within Premier Boxing Champions. But I'm going to start off with Jose Benavides Jr. Sort of kind of, you know, alluding to the question or, or the statement that Jamal just made about, he talked about your energy being differently. Now, things did get heated during the virtual press conference. 
What did you take away from that? Was there anything that you, you know, did you use it as motivation or? I mean, the only reason why the energy is different because I'm not trying to get this fight canceled. I told him if he tries to act tough or tries to get in my face, I'm going to whoop his ass. Plain and simple. That's what I'm going to do Saturday. So if you want to have a fight, I mean, I'm cool right now. I'm cool. You know, like I said, I'm not trying to have no problem with it. So we're waiting for fight night. How do you feel coming into this fight? Obviously, you and your brother have, you know, been boxing since you were kids. But now to get to this stage, the main event, Showtime, main event, co-main event, Showtime pay-per-view, two brothers headlining, uh, you know, in respective matchups. Uh, you obviously have a massive opportunity against Jamal Charlo, but what's that like for the entire Benavides family? You know, it's a dream come true ever since we were kids. It's something we could just dream about, and um, it took a long way, you know, a lot of hard work, but we're here, and you know, we're here as a team, and I wouldn't choose anybody else, you know, my brother, my dad, or... We're a team together, you know, without them, it's, it's nothing. So uh, we're ready, and like I said, we've been training hard, motivated, and it's going to be a good night for both the Benavides brothers, for everyone, the whole Benavides family. All right, Jose, we'll get back to you in a few moments. Jamal, when you spoke about the energy being a different, you know, obviously things got a bit testy during the virtual press conference. Uh, how do you feel now as you guys are seeing each other face-to-face -face for the first time uh, since that uh, virtual press conference? I mean, you know, uh, he said what he had to say. You know, it is what it is. Um, he shook. He already, uh, we in person now. I'm like, oh, boy, what happened with all that shit? We gonna do, he gonna do this and he gonna do that. He shook. See, yeah, yo, Jose Benavidez is a, is a fucking clown. This nigga just said that he's all cool, he's calm, and he's not trying to get the fight canceled. Then the minute Jamal opens his mouth, and says something back, do want to get up and start acting tough and shit like that. Like, it's not even necessary, bro. Like, like I understand, like, it's the fight game and, you know, you want to be aggressive and believe in yourself and confident, all of that. But this shit to me is not even necessary. And then the crazy part is, during the virtual press conference, he started it. He was the one that started talking shit first. Jamal was just responding to him. So, I don't know. People like Jose Benavides are just clowns. And he's acting right now. Like, he's an actor. Like, this is the same dude that was just in Creed 3. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't even take shit serious. That's why Jamal is just still sitting down. Because it's just like, yo, come on, man. Like, you're a fucking clown, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look how, yeah, look how immature and, uh... Exactly. <laughs> look, 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 look at him. Yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing. Bro, you ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing. Exactly. He said, he said, right the fuck down. But yeah, Stop. You, you, you not talking all that. You gonna do this, Stop, you do that. Like, I ain't... Oh, no. Well, that shit. You, you I'm like, not that. It is. So, he understands. Calm down. Jamal, this is the first Calm time, down. and I'll, I'll get with to you know Jose. Man, like, who, like, is he real? Is he really the big brother between him and David Benavidez? Like, cause he act like he look and act like the little brother, bro. It's just like stop it, man. Like, you, like you got the fight. The fight is made. You getting paid? Just, just, just chill out. Like, it's, it's not even that serious, bro. It's not even that serious. Like, I think he's just mad because. <clears throat> he's now fighting for the WBC belt at 160. I think that's why he's so pissed off because other than that, it's like if you're making, you know, six figures for a fight, what do you have to be mad about at that level? Nothing. But, uh, what? What are you mad for? You got your family, your brother, y'all on the biggest stage. Exactly. Like card together. What are you mad for? I'm why are you not, not thanking me? Why you, you want to talk about it? Say thank you, bro. Say thank you for what? Thanking you for what? Because you, your brother would Because you're irrelevant. You. You're irrelevant. Nobody talks about you. If it wasn't for this fight, nobody would be talking about Jose Benavidez Jr., bro. No one would be talking about him. So it's like, calm down. Calm down. It's not that serious. <laughs> Like, go back to Creed. <laughs> go back to Creed. Boxing with freaking Michael B. Jordan and all of them. Like, go Ooh. back to Creed, bro. Stop. Before right? you get Anderson Dane. Stop. You got knocked out in the 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 You got knocked out in You got knocked out in the You got knocked out in the You got You don't see me fucking crying. Saying that, oh, I'm making excuses. Exactly. This is why you got shot. This is why people feel the need to shoot you. Because you're an asshole. That's why. See, people like him, that's exactly why people like him have problems in his in, in life. Because he's a hothead, clearly. Clearly. Or at least he acts like he's a hothead, because I don't even really think he's like that. I think, like, behind the scenes, he's a pretty tame guy. Or, or as a matter of fact, no, I take that back, because he got shot in real life. I don't know, but if I was Jamal, I wouldn't even pay this dude any mind. I would have been like, well, if you all that serious, I'm sitting right here, and you could do something, we can handle it. But you're not going to do anything, so chill out.
I'm right here fighting. No I'm a fucking warrior. No excuse. Unlike you. That's why I stepped out the way. Okay. I ain't no excuse. You walking over here like you gonna do something. Sit your little weak ass down. Exactly. Get up. Sit your little weak ass Shut up. Jamal, both questions, will, this will be for both of you guys. Jamal, I'll start with you. Do you feel, Jamal, do you fight better Yo. when there is animosity with you and an opponent? I don't Keep remember the last up. time where you had genuine disdain for another opponent. It's clear that that is here between you, you and Jose Benavides up. Jr. And speaking of acting up, yeah, it's like you two guys. Like. You fight better when it's a little bit emotionally charged. I'm I'm gonna fight at the top of my level, no yeah, matter if they talk shit or not. Yeah. Like something it's wrong with that. dude. Obviously, he got a few screws missing. He must don't know what he gets to. Angry. But angry. It's, it's okay, bro. What? I'm happy for the Benavidez family. Like me and David always say what's up to each other. We've been knowing each other for a while, fighting on the same cars together. We, 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 you know, we, of course we competitors. You know, uh, Demetrius sitting right here. We competitors too. We talk about fighting all the time, but. For some reason, this dude just got so much to prove. But we'll see. Once we get in there, he's going to end up being just like everybody else. Exactly. In terms of what? When you when meet him about... 32 didn't try. And they all fail. So you're looking at another name in your resume on he's Saturday. Just, he's just a stepping stool. I'm going to step on him super hard. I'm crushing him. It's a wrap. Jose, when he says you're a stepping stone, um, you know, you fought some top guys throughout the course and of your lost. career. You're battle-tested. You come from that amateur he lost background. To a movie you too. also have dealt with you know, adversity in your life like you both have and overcome. He's just, he's just there to be beaten. Jose Benavides is just there to, to just lose. Like, he's just a straight-up, like, loser, bro. Like, if I go on his box rec right now and look at his resume, it's just like when you came across all the top guys like Terrence Crawford and, and who, Danny Garcia and all of that, like, you, you lose at the top level, so... I don't know. I just, I just don't like his bad attitude. If it wasn't like that, I wouldn't have anything to say, anything bad to say about him. But it's just his attitude is just why, I like, I just don't like him, honestly. That. If I was a stepping stone, why didn't he put the belt? Why didn't make? Cause you're not worth the belt, dog. Stop it. Like no one even knew this guy was a 160 pounder. Like this, this nigga came up for what? 140, 147, 154, 160. Now you're fighting at 163. Like your career is all over the place because you just lose at every single level. So it's like, of course, you think you could just jump up to 160 and then just qualify for the belt. It doesn't work like that, bro, because you just came to 160. Stop with the cap. Stop it, bro. You're not worth the belt, so don't ask for it. Stepping stone. He, he, he's back in the ranked. business, right? He's he back in the ranked. You're not worth the belt. You wasn't ranked. Is he, ex exactly. So he's not even ranked. Okay, it don't matter. You're not even ranked. ranked. Yes, it do matter. Yes, it do matter. It don't matter. Yes, it do. This dude think that real life is like Creed. That's what he think. In the movie, Jonathan Majors came straight out of jail and then just jumped right into a title shot. That's what he thinks. So then he think he could just never fight in the division whatsoever and then just come in and then fight for the title. It doesn't work like that, yo. Like, Michael B. Jordan led this dude astray. <laughs> yo, real life does not work like that, bro. Like, he's just a... Bro, oh you should fight gosh, anyway. You should be ready. You're, you're the champion, I'm right? Ready. You're the champion. You look like a fucking a bum, bro. I'm giving you... I'm a bum. I'm a bum. I'm a bum. I'm a bum. You're not gonna do shit. Okay. Yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing, ain't gonna do okay, shit. I'll slap you on fucking... The that's my uh, 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 Go back to school, you son. By everybody. Go back to school, bitch. son. Jose, go back Jose, to school, why do you Jose. feel... Go back to school, Jose. Sit down. <laughs> sit down, bro. Why do you keep standing up like you tough? Yeah, exactly. Whoa, sit Jose, down. Jose, 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 why you keep standing up like you going to do something? Jose, 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 can, can we give him oh, yeah, sit down. Jose, like, yo, guys like that are just straight miserable in life. Like, you could be paying these guys six figures to do what apparently they love to do, and then they'll just still find excuses to be miserable and angry. Sit down and complete the press conference. Dang. Money, bro. This is this is this is why and this this is why Benavidez, his his older brother, or no, well, well, David is more popular and more successful than him because clearly the, his, David is way more level-headed than him. Like him, he's just like a, a loose cannon, and this is why he got he shot. Jose, if we can, um, this like, is, stop. Like, this, this this dude treat the press conference like Jerry Springer. Like, this is like Maury or some shit. Like, chill out, bro. <laughs> Jose, you are not the father. Let's just have a good press no, conference, you, bro. You're bitch. not... Make your fucking hey, excuse you got it. Chill bro. out. What kind you of shoes? What are, what are those? <laughs> what is he wearing? <laughs> what is he wearing? Hold, let's go back. What is he wearing, bro? What are those? <laughs> 
I thought those were, <laughs> I thought those were Adidas. Those are not even Adidas. It's like it's like sit down, bro. Oh, <laughs> sit you down. Got you got it. Bro. Oh my gosh, it, that was me. And my oh, oh, shit. You're you making yourself yeah. look stupid as hell. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. sit down. Anyways, Damn. Yeah. sit down. All right, well, gentlemen, it is clear that there is bad blood between these two, Dang. and uh, we will now focus our attention. On uh, our main event, that's just the co-main event. Can you believe that? Talk about a happy early, de oh, early holiday present for oh, all of us. Uh, Charlo and Benavides is the epitome of being an emotionally charged fight. All right, let's get to our main event for the interim WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. My goodness, this is such a good fight yeah, so that I think without question we are going to get uh, something riveting inside the ring. Uh, two guys who have a lot to prove who fought some high level. 32 and 0, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. <laughs> That was funny. Some good action going on. Can't wait. <laughs> Saturday, 25th. Get your popcorn ready. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all glory due to the most high, of course. Excited for this bout. Been patiently waiting. And here we go. Like I said before, this is the greatest fight that could be made at 168 pounds right now. Me and David Benavides, two people that was willing Benavides. to, you know, um, Put a handshake out there and make it happen. No fuss, no fight. And I'm just excited to be ready to go. So um, I'm glad nobody got injured. Everybody have safe travels. And we're getting ready to fight, baby. It's war time. See, Thank you. See? Exactly. See, that's it's simple. Like, that's Demetrius so simple. Boom, boom. That's how you conduct yourself at a press conference. Yo, I, like, literally, Jose Benavidez should be taking notes. That's how you should just... Just be just respectful, just cool, calm, collected, say what you got to say, and sit down. That's it. Andre, and now we welcome the uh, interim WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to tell everybody, you know, thank you for showing up. also want to uh, thank uh, Al Heyman, Samson Lukowitz, my father, Jose Benavides, David Garcia, my wife, the whole team Benavides family. Um, this is a great way to close out the year. I feel like this is going to be the best card. Um, because everybody has so much to, to prove on this card. You got my brother, you got Charlo, you got Demetrius, you know, you got the guys in the beginning. This is going to be an amazing card, and we're definitely not going to disappoint the fans. Yep. In my opinion, these two fights right here, the co-main event and the main event, could be the fights of the year. So we're just looking forward to giving the fans what they exactly. want to see. And um, November 25th, baby, buy that pay-per-view. It's going to be uh, trying, definitely going to clean, clean up the war mess with all of Spence us. Crawford Thank and you. Charlo Canelo. Two absolute shit shows. Yes, what a way to close out 2023. Premier Boxing Champions doing it in a grand fashion on Showtime Pay-Per-View, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time. I'm going to start with Demetrius Boo Boo Andre. Boo Boo! Boo Boo, you've been asking and clamoring for a big fight your entire career. You hold some yeah. impressive victories, but now you get that massive opportunity that you've always coveted. As we're merely days away, how are you feeling? Now your name is on the marquee in Las Vegas on a big-time pay-per-view event. Now I feel good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mic check, mic check. I'm on my child shit right now. We about to fuck shit up over there. We about to hold the whole Benefit family going to be getting hurt. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. Uh, we're going to beat up Lord Farquaad over there. You know what I'm saying? If you guys know what that is, then you know. If you wow. don't, then you don't. But well, Lord look Farquaad. it up. You feel me? But it's going to be a great night. It's time for war, baby. What? And still. And new. Yeah. <laughs> He's already in game mode already, and we're not even uh, anywhere near Saturday night just yeah. yet. He has a few more days to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Boo Boo, he said one thing about there is mutual respect between both you and David that he stated that, you know, he wanted to fight whoever it was, but you're the one who immediately accepted and came to the table when no one else was really wanting to, you know, meet him inside the ring. Listen, it's war time, baby. I don't know what you're talking about. It's time to fight. That's it. Um, David and I just agreed to make this shit happen and now we're here i mean at the end of the day i have nowhere to go he has nowhere to go and make me the best fighters fight each other and that's what we proving and that's what we doing so i don't know what else to tell you 
Well, I appreciate it, Demetrius. David, for you, why do you feel that this is the best fight to make hey, yeah. in the super middleweight division? Because, you know, he's the top of the division. You know, he's, um, he showed the world that, you know, he's a really good fighter. He was Olympian, two-time world champion. And this is the only direction I thought that it would, uh, that I could go to make, to prove myself that I am the best. And um, he's not a, he's not an easy opponent. He's very um, technical. He has very good defense. But you know, I always find a way to win. And Saturday's not gonna be no different. I'm gonna find a way to beat. Not his ass. over here. I'm gonna beat his ass. Hell no. No. So hell, motherfucker, no. I mean, it's it's all fun and games. But when I get in there, it's just oh, not yeah. funny. Oh, you over here? I no. send all my opponents to the hospital. Look at my track record. You ain't doing Look at Caleb. Look at Lemieux. Look at all of them. They, he was small. He, he was he was small. I mean, I don't know what this Caleb, guy's talking Caleb, about. Caleb is cool too. <laughs> Caleb could box uh, a little bit, but just I ain't yeah. Caleb. It's all fun and right. games to get in the ring with me. I'll yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, hey, two division, two thousand Olympian. It's all fun and games till we get in there. I already know you. ain't say nothing. I already don't know. The first press conference. He feels that the fight will end in the eighth round. Uh, are you sticking with that prediction of what your father had uh, sort of prognosticated back about a month ago? Um, I'm going to try to strike as soon as I get the opportunity to strike. Um, I'm going to try to end it you know, as early as I can because I want to show the people that I am the best fighter and I will find a knockout to everybody. And um, this is what the, the fans want to see. They want to see knockouts and they want to see people go to war. We can go heart for heart, but I'm going to end up victorious on Saturday. Boo Boo, you're undefeated. You've never tasted a defeat, and yet they are proclaiming that they are going to end your night a bit early. Uh, your response? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's definitely opportunity that I can have um, David Benavides walk into a lot of things to end the fight early. So, yeah, it's all good with me. We get paid, we go home, we celebrate, have a good time, go home, celebrate, have a good time, go home, celebrate. <laughs> Being in Las Vegas on the card of, of the if anybody has a personality to be like a really, you know, uh, how should I say, like uh, like one of the faces of boxing, it should be Demetrius Andre, and I, I'm like just so happy for him now that like he's finally getting like the shine that like he's like been denied the majority of his fucking career. But let's continue. This magnitude does it get the juices flowing a little bit more, or does it not matter where you fight this man? Now, of course, Vegas is uh, this is Mecca. It's, uh, you know, the marquee thing is the sport of boxing. We're about to make history come to 25th. Everybody on this car is about to make history some way, somehow. David, you told us that, you know, you had a, what a performance in March on Showtime pay-per-view. That was, your name was on the marquee there, headlining the pay-per-view event. With this being your second go-around headlining status, have you been able to handle it differently? Uh, you know, do you enjoy it more? Uh, you know, what is the whole process like for you? Yeah, honestly, it's the same thing. I just trained this, you know, my last fight, I got even more motivation because it was my first pay-per-view fight. Now that I'm here at the pay-per-view stage, I just want to stay here, keep working hard, and, you know, keep giving the fans the fights they want to see um, and keep fighting the best in the world. All right. Yep. I see why people pay for makeup uh what, what kind of energy are you getting from jamal because it's definitely different than uh what we've experienced throughout his entire career uh, i mean i haven't i've been in the gym you know i've been in the gym i actually i was training one day i was getting ready for plan i actually uh, fought not too long ago so i feel like i'm i'm ready to go i'm i feel good and i mean i'm, I'm done with all this talking all this talking back and forth this and that i'm ready to fight People were acting like Jamal was like Adrian Brown or some shit like that. Honestly, his demeanor to me is really the same as it's always been. I mean, I think really if anyone was really going off, it was more so Jamal more so than, than him. So I don't know what <clears throat> people really expected, you know, him to say or do, you know, really. He has the boxing public forgotten about who you are that you remind him of on Saturday night? That I, I fight hard um, each and every round, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to knock him out. When I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. All right, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask the fighters for one final uh, comment. And also, I, I want to know, I'll start off with you, Jose Benavidez Jr., in a perfect world for you. How does the fight end against Jamal Charlo in the co-main event on Showtime pay-per-view in Las Vegas, Michelob Ultra Arena? 
And like I said before in all other interviews, I'm going to stop him, and that's where you're going to see uh, Charlo thinks that I'm small for some reason, that he thinks it's going to be a walk in the park. We'll see. That's all I got to say. Well, I'm going to beat him, and he's going to see what he's really faced against. All right, Jose Benavides Jr., Jamal Charlo, the undefeated Jamal Charlo, returning to competition. Your prediction for Saturday night? Just go out, do my thing, uh, listen to my trainers. We come up with a perfection um, on the game plan, so we don't have to. I, I'm really not really worried about him. I, I don't think he's small. I, I know he's small. He's small minded, small everything. Everything Rags. about him too little for me. So Big Charlo is back. Well, that is our co-main event, Charlo and Benavides Jr. Now our main event, the undefeated two guys who are unbeaten, Demetrius Bubu and Jrade. Will you become a three-division world champion and how? Yeah, um, just want to thank the Benavides family for giving me the opportunity to become a three-division world champion. And just um, how it's going to happen is by winning, by, you know, um, energy, cause getting groovy and having fun and staying elusive. And it's me again. Big card, ladies and gentlemen, David Benavides, Demetrius Boo Boo, Andre. We will now have our face-offs here between our co-main uh -oh. event and our main event. Happy Thanksgiving, ladies uh -oh. and gentlemen. Tomorrow, we will have the open media workouts in Las Vegas at the Mandalay yeah, Bay dope. Saturday night. Showtime pay-per-view, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Love presented by Premier Boxing Champions, promoted Love by TGB you. Promotions and Samson Boxing. Now we will have our ceremonial face-off here in Los Angeles. Look, look at him rubbing his back and shit like that. Was that his pops or something? Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, keep rubbing his back. You gonna need it. You gonna need that shit. Yeah, Benavidez is not that much bigger than him. What, like, the same height? Maybe a half inch? Uh, it's not like this. Yeah. So that's it. So that's it. That's it. All right. So my thoughts on this fight, or, or at least my my fight predictions. So <clears throat> I'm gonna just start with Charlo and Jose Benavidez, and I will say that stylistically, this is a bad matchup for Jose. I don't think Jose has enough skill. I don't think he has enough power to really stand up to Charlo in 10 rounds. Um, I think this is a good tune-up fight for Charlo. Um, hopefully, he's got all his faculties, you know, in order. Hopefully, his training camp was on point. So that way, his get-back fight will be like a great performance. Hopefully, a stoppage to get people talking and excited again about you know what's going to happen whether it's at 160 or him moving up to 168 you know because if charlo is using this catch weight fight as a stepping stone to get to 168 then i think that it'll just make the 168 division that much more popping and more lit which is good for boxing as a whole so i'm predicting a unanimous decision or a tko stoppage um for charlo as far as Benavidez and Andre is concerned, that's a bit more of a, uh, I, I want to say harder to predict. Um, I like David Benavidez. I think he's cool. Um, I like his personality, but I'm rooting for Demetrius Andre. And I think what that fight is going to look like is, it's like David Benavidez is going to come forward and he's going to be like a wall. That's just coming forward. Despite him getting hit with whatever he's getting hit with, he's going to just keep coming forward. And it's going to be a test of Demetrius's stamina and to see how long he can keep David Benavidez at bay and keeping him off of him. Because that's pretty much how it usually goes. But that's what happened with Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant looked good up until he gassed out and he wasn't able to keep David Benavidez off of him. And that's why he got stopped. Um, I do think Demetrius is a bigger fighter than um, Caleb Plant in terms of size. 
I think he's more skilled. I think he has more power. Um, and I think he has the better background than Caleb Plant does. So um, I honestly think that Demetrius Andre can pull it off. But I think what Demetrius has to do, he has to, he has to really make David respect his power early. He has to catch him with a good shot that will make David say, okay, I can't just walk up on him like I do everybody else. And because of that, he'll want to fight Demetrius at mid-range and probably try to engage, you know, every so often. But basically, Demetrius Andrew wants to, should make David fight his fight. So that way, it'll be on his terms because we've seen what Demetrius Andrew could do and I'll use the Demon Nicholson fight as an example where he was putting a lot of punches together up close and he was able to do both, you know, fight on the outside and fight on the inside. So I think this fight, I could rely on Demetrius Andre going the distance. However, I do think his style will kind of um, open him up to some stuff. So he is, you know, capable of making mistakes. But I think if he learns from all of those times where he left himself open for uh, open for something, he'll be able to, you know, go 12 rounds. Because I don't think, I don't think this fight is gonna be a stoppage on either side. I think it's gonna go 12 because both of them are super experienced. So I don't think either one of them is gonna um, leave themselves open, you know, to get like KO'd or some shit like that. And both of them have a good chin. So, um, and I also want to say that after this fight i think jamal should definitely fight caleb plant and if demetrius andre beats david benavidez then he is entitled to a shot at the wbc single day mayo because i guess that's when canelo wants to come back from vacation or some shit like that so if that's the case that fight needs to happen and that fight will sell given the whole situation that happened between the two of them at the press conference, you know, two years ago. So it's not like the fight wouldn't sell because I think it would. And um, the fight would really sell itself on top of Canelo being, again, the biggest fighter in boxing right now and Demetrius Andrade having the personality that he does. I think that would be a great fight. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think those are pretty much my thoughts. Um, as always, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Good luck.